like a lot of kids in my era, in my neighborhood even, listening to the radio, and, and it was all about the guitar. Late 60s through the 70s, and uh, I knew I loved music right away, and I thought, okay, I'll try the piano. I failed miserably at the piano, I was awful at that. I thought something simpler, maybe the trumpet, so I don't have to read all the notes from both hands. I went to one note on the staff. It was really bad. And I thought, I'm not going to read any notes, I'm going to play the drums. <laughs> and I failed at that too. And it was, so it was really a fit when I finally got the guitar. It was like a magic moment for me to get a guitar out. I started to play just two chords. Yeah. I've been through the desert all <laughs> and I played that song all, all, all song. <laughs> tell, tell my brothers and sisters, I'm from a big family, so tell my brothers and sisters just threaten to kill me unless I learn the third chord. <laughs> so let's go to the, the mid-90s. So you're, you're, you have been traveling the, the circuit, um, playing colleges. Um, Right. You get to the mid '90s, and you you now had a record contract, and you put an album. How to do? It, it, went, it was great. It exceeded all my expectations. I've been making records on my own, and driving all around the country, playing to colleges to, to sell the records, and um, figured that eventually, if I did a good job, a record label would find me. And I never did actually like solicit record companies, but I, I, I got offered a deal, and uh, a record called Finger Dance came out. In 1996, and uh, about six weeks after it came out, it was at number seven on the Billboard charts. And uh, it was really fun for me, you know, I'm a kid from Minnesota, and here I'm seeing my name up there with other artists who are big in this field, you know, Enya, Yanni, some of the other instrumental musicians, so it was a real thrill. So, um, so you went back in the studio at some point to record a second album, and what happened? Well, um, the first one did so well that expectations were really high. I had very high expectations myself of the complexity of what I'm doing. This isn't just kind of average guitar playing. So I wrote some really, really beautiful, very, very difficult pieces. And I worked and worked and worked and worked on them. And just as we were getting done with the record, I went back to get ready to go on the road and play all my music. And some of the earlier pieces, I simply couldn't really play anymore. There was something going on in one of my hands, and it was unexplainable. I, I, I can imagine a 50-city tour after 50-city tour, and I've never had a problem with my hands. Well, all of a sudden, I'm up playing solo guitar concerts. Like, I was just up here playing for you, and, and if there's a bad note, everybody in the room knows who played it. So I, <laughs> so I go out on the road. I go out on the road. Struggling playing some of my music, and the second record comes out, and, and it, it does okay, but, but I'm getting worse and worse and worse. And I, I went to talk to a few mentor friends of mine, and they said, Billy, we really think you, you've overdone it with your hands, you need to take a break. So I took a break, thinking that my hands were just tired. Came back from my break, and my hands were, my hand was worse. So I'm, I'm thinking, well, maybe it's carpal tunnel. You know, we've all heard of carpal tunnel. Sure. We, we like, it would be nice if it was a problem that was as familiar as that, because there's a cure, there's treatment. So I went to get evaluated for carpal tunnel. And they did all, all the tasks and said, no, Billy, there's nothing wrong with your hand. We can't find anything wrong with your hand. Maybe it's something wrong somewhere else. And I thought, wow, wow. Is the pressure finally getting to me? I don't know. I feel like the pressure is getting to me. I love what I'm doing. I love my work. But something's obviously wrong. And uh, so I started out pursuing every kind of alternative therapy for, for this. And what was happening is these two fingers, I don't know if you were watching when I was playing, but on this hand, the only finger that really wants to play music anymore is my index finger. It's the only one I can type with. What happens with, with focal dystonia, which is, I have a these fingers were continually curling up in my palm. So when I go to play some of my pieces, I, I simply couldn't play the palms. So I tried every therapy, acupuncture. I actually kind of like acupuncture. <laughs> All those needles in you and the 
you don't really hurt. <laughs> Did a lot of acupuncture, qigong, um, rolfing, myofascial tissue release. I tried everything, and and I finally got to the point where I thought, you know what? My hand is getting worse and worse. Maybe I do. Maybe it is up here. Maybe I have a brain tumor. And I ended up um, going into spirit. It was really scary. Here I was already, I was a single dad at the time, and, and still a single dad, and so I've got a lot of responsibility, and I don't want to lose my life to this thing. So I go in and I get evaluated, and I walk in, and I just thank goodness this neurologist that I saw immediately knew what was wrong. She said it's it's an incurable neuromuscular disease called focal dystonia. Well, that's a terrible and I heard those words, and I thought, <laughs> dystonia, is that like a country somewhere? <laughs> 